Welcome to the 101 on Sports here on Fox 2. I'm Randy Carricker from 101 ESPN and our friends at the University of Missouri just completed their school year. Recently, the administration was in town for their Come Home Tour and we had a chance to visit with Athletic Director Desiree Reed francois basketball coach Dennis Gates, and we get things started with the head football coach at the University of Missouri, Eli Drinkwitz. Welcome back to the 101 on Sports here on Fox 2. And it's always good to see and talk to the head football coach at the University of Missouri, Eli Drinkwitz. Coach, always good to have you with us here in St. Louis. Yeah, it's always good to be in the in the city of St. Louis and uh, one of our most passionate fan bases, leading alumni base for the University of Missouri and obviously probably our league uh, recruiting spot too. So great to, great to spend some time here. How do you feel about spring ball? Man, I felt really good coming out of, uh, of spring ball. You know, we knew defensively that we had a chance to be really good, uh, but we're adding in a few pieces. We're able to uh, bring in a uh, Trevez. We're able to bring in a Tristan Newsom. We're able to uh, figure out what we're going to do at the defensive end position. Really saw the growth of Johnny Walker. Darius Robinson's becoming a dominant player. Our linebacker core is really strong. Obviously, our secondary is is pretty good right there with, with Chris Abrams Drain and Ennis Rakestraw, JC Carlisle, Joseph Charleston. Uh, you know, you have Dalen Carnell, you have Trevez Johnson transferring in from Florida, Sidney Williams from Florida State. You got a lot of pieces. Isaac Thompson from SLU, uh, Marvin Burks from, from Cardinal River. So you got a lot of pieces there. You're seeing those guys really come together. And then the, on the offensive side of the ball, you know, you're letting Kirby uh, uh, really get his offensive going. You knew you are going to be a little far behind, but you're seeing steps. You're seeing Luther in the slot be a, a dominant playmaker. You're seeing Theo Weiss um, step up and make plays. You're seeing Armand Nimbu and Marcus or Marcellus Johnson at right tackle really start to come together. So it was a lot of fun. And I, I want to get back to, to Kirby in a moment, but this is the first time as a head coach at Mizzou that you've had your defensive coordinator in back-to-back -back years. Yeah. That has to make a difference. Yeah, going on year four, you finally got it right. You know, <laughs> I mean, they say that that, that uh, failure is just growth opportunities, right? So it was an opportunity there for us to continue to grow and, and really establish, continue to establish what defensive football at the University of Missouri wants to look like moving forward. So very excited about Coach Baker and our entire defensive staff came back uh, so it was a lot of fun there and, and always good to continue to grow. And then Kirby Moore comes in as your offensive coordinator. You've been your off, your own offensive coordinator. So yeah. how much of what Eli Drinkwitz likes offensively do you put on him? Well, uh, honestly, I just put the philosophy, right? We still want to be a quarterback-driven offense that dictates the tempo of the game, that wants to be an attacking downhill uh, run game, vertical pass game, and then focus on uh, execution, especially in two-minute third down in the red zone. Whatever plays you have to do that, go for it, right? So uh, I don't really care about the plays. I just know that's what we want to see offensively, which is similar to what I did with Coach Baker on defense. Do you think, now that we know what we know about Brady Cook and his shoulder, did we see in the second half the real Brady Cook, or was he kind of limited by the, the injury? Well, I mean, I think we, we saw uh, flashes of Brady, but obviously everybody has an opportunity to continue to grow and get better. And, and uh, you know, we brought in competition for him to, to continue to face, and, and that's life. Uh, no different than Zach Williams just got brought in, or Wilson just got brought in Aaron Rodgers. So, uh, I mean, uh, no matter who you are, where you're at, you're going to always have to compete to be number one. And, and uh, I'm really proud of Brady's leadership ability and his, his competitive heart and spirit. And now we just got to continue to grow as a passer. Ooh. How is that competition heading into the fall the, the, at the quarterback position? Yeah, I mean, it's, is, it, is it open? Um, I mean, yeah, it's open. Every, everything's open, right? Whoever gives us the best chance to win. Will Brady Cook run out there with the ones? Absolutely. Um, now, does that mean he gets to automatically have that position all, all fall camp? No. Um, you're going to have to consistently get us in the end zone in order to be the quarterback uh, at Mizzou. We, we've got to score more points. I've done my job. I've really, you can't blame me anymore, right? So everybody else has to – continue to step up in order to uh, help us win. And I know that you had some changes in the receiving core, but I know you really like your receiving core again. Yeah, yeah I mean, obviously we lost a, a really good player, uh, uh, an all SEC performer, and, and so now we got to replace that, right? So how do you replace that production? We're going to slide Luther Burton into the slot. Uh, we brought in Theo Weiss and Dennis Jackson, who are both uh, productive. Uh, obviously, Dennis has already played in this league. Theo's played a lot of years in the Big 12. Uh, and then you got to continue to watch the growth of Makai Miller, uh, Jamarian Wayne, uh, uh, Mookie Cooper. Uh, and then you've got these true freshmen coming in. Uh, 
it's pretty exciting to see Marquise run a 10-1 in the state of Texas, yeah. the fastest, <laughs> one of the fastest 100 meters, and we know he's coming to play at Mizzou, so it's pretty exciting about what the future looks like at that position. Want to touch on a couple more things. Number one, last time I heard you speak, you were talking about wanting to build depth on the offensive line through yeah. the transfer portal, and it's a huge part. Have you been able to find that part that you're looking for? Well, we're, we're, we're casting out a net. We just don't know <laughs> if we can get them in the boat yet. So uh, we're still working on it. Uh, hope to have an update here in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, and the, the other part of this that I want to talk about is here you, as we, you head into year four, I, I throw out 2020. I, I kind of throw out the COVID year. And then, like you said, you've been a couple of defensive coordinators, a new offensive coordinator. But do you feel like you can build a team, and but you want to build a program? Yeah. How, how do you feel the program? Yeah. Here's the deal. All right. <laughs> we've been to three straight bowl games yep. in my first three years. Uh, and we've continually recruited and established uh, the, the, the foundation of a program. And I think we're consistent who we are, how we recruit, how we uh, approach the high school coaches, how we approach the – uh, the transfer portal, how we approach our team. Now it's an opportunity for us to really take that next step. And I realize we all want it and exp are expecting to see it. I'm expecting to see it too. Um, and so I'm excited about what the future is. There's no doubts about what we've done. And, and would we all like to have won a few more of those games last year? Absolutely. Would we have liked to have won the bowl game two years ago? Absolutely. But we're right there. Uh, you know, it says in the Bible, don't grow weary while doing good for you'll seek your, you'll see your reward if you don't lose heart. So that's where I'm at in the process. Um, and I feel very strong about what we're doing and the way we're doing it. And I know that the results are coming. Um, there's only been two coaches in their first three years go to three bowl games. I'd happen to be one of those two. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. So, I mean, hey, we're doing some really good things. And, and you see me there when I'm as a media member, but I go there yeah. with tickets as well. I think the atmosphere at Faroe Field is really fun well, yeah, on a game day. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're doing a really good job. I, I, I give a lot of credit to Desiree and her ability to re-engage our fan base. Our students have done an excellent job of creating a great atmosphere. You saw it start in our football season, obviously carried over to basketball and what Dennis has been able to do. And and now it's our turn to bring those uh, fan base back to Faroe Field and, and uh, continue to build a, a home field advantage for us. Looking forward to the year. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Yeah, M-I-Z. Z-O-U. Eli Drinkwitz with us on the 101 on Sports. More coming up here on Fox 2. Welcome back to the 101 on Sports here on Fox 2. And it is great to have the head basketball coach at the University of Missouri, Dennis Gates, in town. Always good to see you. Good to see you, too. Thanks for having me. So it, it's been a little over a year since you got the job at Mizzou. Relative to what your expectations were when you took the job, how has it played out for you? Well, I think getting a job in the middle of March allowed us to set a foundation with returning players, Kobe Brown, Caleb Brown, and Ronnie DeGray. Then we had to build it with a staff, but also recruits. We didn't get those recruits in and, and team building really until June. So when you look at the time frame, you look at we, we were able to build a team in four months uh, and get us on the floor and get competitive, but also integrate a style of basketball that I thought did exactly what I said it would do at our press conference, uh, pressure on offense and defense. And those are things that kids like, right? When you recruit a kid, whether it's uh, out of the transfer portal, whether it's JUCO, where it's second two years in a row, JUCO player of the year is headed to Mizzou, or uh, keeping your own players, kids love to play that style that you employ. Absolutely. I think that style has to be part of it, but you have to look at those different areas that we also led in. When you look at player development, having a kid like Demoy Hodge improve, Nick Honor improve, those are kids that come from other four-year programs. Then you look internally at the improvement of Kobe Brown. Unbelievable improvement when you jump from 20% three-point shooting to 45. Great improvement in 12 points to 15 points, but overall field goal percentage. There's a facet of his game that I thought he was able to display, but that's only done with player development. Coach, there's an old coaching axiom. They don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, right? That is right. And that's one that you practice. That is right. Uh, how how do kids respond to that? This is a, a different era than when you were playing yeah. or probably when you started coaching. Right? Well, this is a generation that researches everything. Everything that you say, they're going to Google and see if it's true or false. So in those moments when you're teaching a kid about faith, teaching them about blind trust, 
you have to build that up before you're asking. So you have to give. And I've been fortunate enough to have some coaches and educators pour into my life, show me the best version of myself. And I'm just trying to do the same thing with these young people. But it's not done without a relationship. It's not done with our eight core values of friendship, love, accountability, trust, discipline, unselfishness, enthusiasm and toughness. And that's what I want these kids to take away from their experience with it. And you talk about those eight core values a lot. I'm sure that yeah. now all of your players that played for you last year, they can recite it in a blink. I want all of our fans to be able to. Okay, good. Yeah, we will. Yeah. <laughs> no, those guys know, know it top to bottom. And it, it, it's, it's one of the other different things about, especially your sport now, but I think every sport is it used to be a, you told a kid to do something and you coached them hard and they did it. Can you coach hard in 2023? You can't coach hard if you don't know a kid and if that kid does not know you. You can't do anything without a relationship. Uh, is it transactional or transformational? Most kids build trust over a period of time. Most kids come to us with a type of trauma that doesn't allow them to trust easy. So you got to get past that. You got to build team, team camaraderie, team connectivity, player coach relationship, coach to player. And before we wrap up here, we were at an event uh, a couple of weeks ago regarding NIL and it's, it's everywhere. Everybody is utilizing NIL, right? So as you talk to Mizzou fans, what's your biggest piece of advice for them or what's your biggest request of Mizzou fans in regards to how NIL works? Well, I would I would just say that reach out, first of all, to our on campus and uh, our ETTF uh, foundation who runs NIL. I think it's a fluid sort of conversation because it's forever changing, but also it's a new landscape in college basketball. But we're in transition with all of college sports with this addition to what student athletes can or cannot do. And we're here and we want to stay innovative and use our creativity to stay on the cutting edge. And ultimately what it comes down to is we as fans can impact the competition Absolutely. in the SEC. None like before can you impact uh, in a great way the type of uh, not only players, but program that we consistently run. Uh, most student athletes are making decisions, not just on majors or how many minutes or how many shots, but also what's an NIL, NIL opportunity? What marketing opportunities can they build their name and their brand on top of in the future after they see college success? And we have examples of that uh, throughout our city, but also willing participants, whether it's local businesses, companies, or even individuals participating. Last thing, Dennis Gates, when I watch you on the sideline, yeah. it looks like you aren't having fun, but I know you're, you, I know you're having fun. I do fun. smile, right? Well, no, yeah, yeah, you do, you, you do right now, check out that smile. But I know at your core, you're coaching basketball, you're having a great time. Absolutely, I think uh, practices are times for me to interject, Games are times for players to perform. Mm -hmm. It's no different than any play or performance on Broadway. You have sort of like creativity and practice going on. You have different ways everyone learns different. But during that special moment when that, that big light is on you, uh, it's time for student athletes to perform. And I want to give them that, that platform, that stage to do so and put them in the best situations. And sometimes I sit back and enjoy to watch the, the same things you guys watch, but also I'm in amazement with the level of competition that they go out there with every day and represent the front of the jersey. I know we're going to see you here during the summer, and we'll definitely see you here next Christmas time when you, when you bring your team back to St. Louis. Absolutely. Thank you guys for having me. Thanks for watching MIZ. COU, Coach Dennis Gates on the 101 on Sports. More coming up here on Fox 2. Welcome back to the 101 on Sports. Great to have you with us on Fox 2. And we get an opportunity to visit with the athletic director at the University of Missouri, Desiree Reed Francois. Always good to see you. Randy, it's great to see you again. You have had a remarkable run to start your career at the University of Missouri. How are you feeling about it right now? Well, we have an incredible group of people. Um, and I get a lot more credit than I deserve. And our staff and our coaches and our student athletes are just so special. So I'm very blessed and humbled to, to be here. One of the things that you and I talked about last fall as Dennis Gates was starting his career as the basketball coach was getting people into the stands at Mizzou Arena. And I even mentioned to you 
the, the yellow seats. I, I hated seeing the yellow <laughs> seats, right? But you didn't see the yellow seats for most of last season because you were able to sell a lot of tickets. Wasn't it special? It was great. Um, Mizzou has incredible basketball tradition. Uh, and we were able to tap into like that special feeling. And Dennis has been incredible about engaging the fans. Our student athletes have such wide, incredible personalities and brought people in. And really, people started caring. And well, I'm sure people have always cared, but we brought people in, we invited them to come home, and it's been really special. Come home is the event we're at, Come, come Home Mizzou. And you are actually bringing the Mizzou football program back here. You and the St. Louis Sports Commission to take on Memphis next September. How important is that to have that tie and have your football team actually play in either here or Kansas City? Oh, it's super important. Uh, St. Louis is such a special market for us. We have so many alums here. And I think when I was pulling our season ticket report earlier today, I think roughly 23% of our season ticket holders are from St. Louis. So we knew we had a special opportunity. We didn't necessarily need to go to Memphis this year. And I wanted to give Coach Drinkowitz and our staff as much of a, uh, we wanted to give them an incredible fighting chance. Uh, and that schedule, we thought, well, we could buy out that game, but we don't need eight home games. We really need to be in St. Louis. And so we worked with the St. Louis Sports Commission and they were, they were great to work with. And so we uh, moved the game from against Memphis here to St. Louis. And, and bring Mizzou to the Lou. And I'm sure there's a lot of people, Mizzou fans, that aren't in the 23% of the season ticket holders that say, why St. Louis? Obviously, many of those people can make it to St. Louis. But what is it about that facility and this city that makes it so attractive? It's such a great city. Who doesn't love St. Louis, right? I love being here. I think this is my third time in like six days um, in being in St. Louis. And we were at the Griggs LaPointe last week. And um, so it's just a, it's a great city. And we are the football program for St. Louis. Um, we've got to bring our whole state together and support Mizzou athletics. Um, and so part of it is we need to go do our part and go to St. Louis. And so this was a great opportunity. And the, the conference isn't stopping, is it? You've got Oklahoma and Texas coming in. Uh, let's start from a football perspective. Obviously, financially, ultimately, it's going to be great for the conference. It'll be great for the University of Missouri. But what do those two additions mean to you at the University of Missouri? Well, that, they're storied programs, and, you know, we're just glad that they followed the University of Missouri's <laughs> lead and, and, you know, joined us in the Southeastern Conference. But, no, in all, in all seriousness, it's just it's great for it's great for the SEC. The SEC is, is such a competitive conference, and um, we're glad to have it. And, obviously, it, it's so tough to keep up. Uh, we talked last week about NIL, and that's just another place, whether it's facilities or recruiting, NIL now is another place where you as an athletic director have to have your program keep up, right? Well, it's not just keep up. It's also be remarkably competitive. Mm -hmm. And we're going to compete in everything that we do. NIL, um, we should have done it. We as an industry should have done it 20 years ago. So I'm glad that we're doing it now. And just like any massive shift, there's going to be some bumps and bruises along the way until we normalize. And that's where we're at right now. It's a little bit of, um, it's uncharted territory. It's almost like you're kind of flying a plane and learning how to do it as you're going, but that's okay. Because um, sometimes when there's some chaos in a marketplace, that's what creates great opportunity. Do you have an advantage in that you do have a market here with nine Fortune 500 companies in St. Louis across the state? You have Kansas City with a bunch of Fortune 1000s. Is it a big, is NIL a, a big Fortune 1000 endeavor or is it more businesses than that? Um, it, NIL, it, well, there's three components to NIL. Um, it's obviously that, and the corporate development is a huge piece. And so when you look at what St. Louis brings and when you look at what Kansas City brings, um, it, great opportunities, but it's, uh, and great marketing opportunities for our student athletes. And, but there's also the education piece. And now our student athletes, they're starting to, they're learning about what an LLC is. They're learning about themselves as brands. And so it's going to benefit the entire university because when you see um, some of, like Isaiah McGuire, he's probably going to get drafted Thursday, right? He'll be in Kansas City. And uh, Isaiah McGuire is like a 3.0 student. He volunteers in the community. He's a great story. And so putting his brand out there, it benefits everybody. Um, and so NIL, it's it's a great opportunity. And I think that's one point that needs to be made here is that NIL is a great opportunity, but you're still selling what the University of Missouri has to offer to students, too. It's not just come here for the money, right? It's come here because of the experience and the education. 
Well, that and also we're getting into marketplaces that we haven't traditionally been in, mm -hmm. right? Um, Luther's potato chips, right? Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool to walk in and see Luther Burden on potato chips and everyone associates. I mean, Luther is one of our star football players. Mm -hmm. And so it helps co-brand the university, co-brands um, our football program. It's a great thing. Yeah, Desiree, we always ask you about football and basketball. But I, I talked to your wrestling coach, Brian Smith, an unbelievable wrestling program. I know that football or baseball and softball are going now. You have to be really enthralled with where your overall athletic program is and where it's headed. We're, we're pretty excited. Um, six out of our eight winter sports programs all were in the top 25 or made the NCAA tournament. Uh, Brian Smith's program finished fifth in the entire country. Keegan O'Toole won the national championship for the second time in a row. And he's only a sophomore, I know. And next year, <laughs> and national championships are in Kansas City. So I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> we need to make sure. Um, but uh, our, our gymnastics program, top 14, swimming, our men's swimming and diving program, they had their best finish at top 16 than they've had in a decade. So we have a lot of incredible momentum and looking forward and like momentum, um, it just keeps going, right? And so it's just a force multiplier. And you have, uh, you strive for excellence. I know you well enough to know that you, uh, you aren't going to be mediocre, that, that you strive for excellence. What is your mantra that you give to your, your staff, your team every day? Um, it's all about people and we're going to out people people. We look for selfless, smart, hard workers and we're not going to back down from anyone and we're just going to outwork people. Um, we're going to look for creative ways to do it, but all it all starts and ends with our people. And by the way, I do want to point out, we talked about the wrestling program. They're going to be here in St. Louis the night before yeah. the Bush Bragging Rights or the, the Bragging Rights game. They will be over at Stiefel, Pro yes. right? That'll yes. be great. Well, we want to bring our programs to, to St. Louis. St. Like, St. Louis is just an important market. It's a great city. We recruit heavily here, and, and we want to make sure that we're all one state. Is this as much fun as you thought it was going to be? <laughs> it is a lot of fun. It was, I have to tell you, um, I haven't seen my husband in about three weeks. And uh, I think I'm out 28 out of 32 days. And he went, he showed up at a come home tour event the other night. And Did I was, you say come home? I was like, what are you doing here? He's like, honey, if I haven't come home, I'm not real home in a long time. So I was like, all right. So noted. Good. Yeah. So, so anyway, so thank you for having me. It's always great to see you. Thank you. Nice to see you. Desiree Reed francois with us on the 101 on Sports. Glad to have you with us and we'll have more coming up on Fox 2. No doubt that Mizzou's athletic department is on the rise and they have some great things on the horizon. Our thanks to athletic director Desiree Reed Francois, also basketball coach Dennis Gates, and of course football coach Eli Drinkwitz. And holy cow, they're going to get things started with the football program already in June. We thank you for tuning in and being a part of the 101 on Sports. It's always great to have you with us. And we've got a lot more coming for you next week and throughout the course of the summer here on Fox 2. Until next week, have a great one, everyone, and we'll see you then. Thank you.